Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you about kindergarten because it is such a great, great year for your child. I know my child started off in Alpha and went through JK, and this year she's moving on <laughs> to uh, middle school. So I've been doing a lot of inside research as she's <laughs> moved through the years, and I loved Alpha, and I love JK, and I loved kindergarten. There's so many great things ahead for your child. And you know, it's interesting, because this is a time where they are, just like this year, they're sponges. There's so much that they're just absorbing and learning and growing. And you will, you will see that as we go forward in kindergarten. Um, but this quote, really, <laughs> when you think about it, um, there's so much that they're going to learn that's going to set them up for success as they go forward. Because so much of the focus in kindergarten is on social emotional learning. Uh, several years ago, I did a research study, and I interviewed students who had been in a school from pre preschool all the way through sixth grade. And one thing they had to do is, um, what are the big ideas of the school? And they had to capture these big ideas with photographs. And it was really interesting, because most of their photographs were in kindergarten students. <laughs> it was, I said, well, tell me. You have to show me evidence. Well, here it is. We work together. We take care of each other. Um, we're a community. We have choice and we have a voice in our learning. We, we, we take learning into our hands. This is their reason. They were sixth graders, but it's amazing that they went back to those early years because that's when they learn in kindergarten. They learn like you have to share and you have to listen to others and you have to problem solve. Um, because there will be problems <laughs> and they have to learn to negotiate and to compromise and they're really learning to be a good friend to other people and um, to just be a good person and to think right now so much in an alpha is that me and then they start to like JK okay there's other people here <laughs> and kindergarten are even more aware of that so it's a great time and what's happening developmentally is you know Again, you know, they want to please, um, they're excited to learn, they're highly motivated and curious, and we just want to take that and keep going, right? Um, they also like routines at this age, you know, what's happening first, second, third in our day, so that's really important for them. Um, they want to please their teachers, you know, and they want to please their parents as well, but it's also a time where they're going to test boundaries. You know, you may say, where they learn that? How I didn't teach them that. Well, guess what? <laughs> they're trying to figure some things out, and they're going to try some new things. And they might say, they might be like, no, this is what I want. And there's some work that needs to be done there. <laughs> but um, it's just that time in their life where they're feeling their independence a little bit more. And we love that, you know, because kindergarten is about building independence. Anything that they can do for themselves, we want them to be able to do. Well, you know, how a child learns is so important. We know that children can learn reading a basil, but they can also learn something different when they're learning, um, let's say our goal is we want children to love to read and to have a, a reading life. Well, we're gonna approach that a little bit differently, right? So how children learn is so important. And I wanted to talk to you this morning a little bit about the philosophy. Uh, we're, we're one school with the experiential school. It's not, we're short cross. Part of our work is to, to align our curriculum, our practices, our language. It's not to be separate entities in the school so that we're spiraling, spiraling up and building on each year and just expanding for what they're ready for developmentally. And the middle school does the same thing, right? So each, each school, just grows into the other. And there's a lot that junior kindergarten, JK, and kindergarten share. And I'm gonna share some of that with you. And then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the differences. But philosophically, you know, we're progressive and we're child-centered. So we believe that curriculum should be, be built on children's natural inclinations. What is it that children are curious about? How do they learn best? Um, we wanna be able to be responsive to our children's needs. So differentiating instruction is really important. You'll see, whole group, small group, and a lot of individual work being done. Um, we really believe in hands-on experiential learning. And this isn't just kindergarten. It's all the way through. It just 
kind of looks different as they go through the different grades. Um, you know, building relationships and knowing children really well, that's part of progressive education. Knowing who they are, knowing their needs, knowing their backgrounds, knowing their interests, all of that's important and it needs to be taken into consideration when you're teaching children. And um, this is part of our philosophy in building a strong community. You know, I think that's another big piece, that children feel they're part of something bigger than themselves. And, um, you know, that's a big emphasis in what we do throughout the whole school. It's the classroom community, it's the school community, and then there's a lot of work that we do with the outside community around us. So, and we believe just, you know, children are capable. They're capable. And so, you know, we want to put that learning into their hands. And, but there's a lot of similarities. Um, you can expect there's two wonderful teachers in the classroom. And you know, some of those teachers have their masters in education, the assistants have their masters in education. So there's two teachers. The entire kindergarten team works very closely together, just like junior kindergarten. There's time just to plan together and work together, and the classes come together for different things, all different things. Um, a lot of hands-on learning, and even experiential learning. If you're a writer and you're teach we're teaching children the craft of writing, and they're learning to put their voice on paper. That's experiential learning as well. Uh, so there's lots of different ways. You know, we do project work. I mean, that's something that's so important to us is inquiring from project-based learning. And that is, um, for us, is, it's an in-depth investigation. It's based on something my children want to know, we think it's worthy of knowing, and you know, we're, we're going to take kids out in the world so it's accessible to them. It shouldn't be something so far away that they can't get up close to it. And we go deep, and we go places, and we have experts come, and children do a lot of research, so that we're teaching them how to learn, right? And how to ask great questions, even though I know they know how to ask questions, but in their own learning, and then to find different resources, gather that information, make sense of what they're learning about, and then to be able to put it into another form to teach others. And that form can be take shape in all different ways. It could be a project share, it can be a play, it can be a movie, it can be a whole grade level production. Lots of ways to share our learning and to be the expert. You know, play is important. You know, so the same in kindergarten. We're out there having a good time, climbing, getting dirty, having fun with our friends. Um, there's a little bit of, I don't know, probably in JK too, where today's you're my friend, tomorrow I'm not so sure, okay, next day you're my friend, you know, that happens. Um, you took my tire that I was playing with and now I want it back. Um, you know, but outdoor play is really important. Actually, kindergarten and junior kindergarten are sharing the same playground next um, year, at least for the, until March, our, our date that we move into our new building. Um, so we'll be over here and it'll be set up with bikes in the paths and there'll be block building and places to dig and it'll be a lot of fun for them. So they'll be together. We'll be eating lunch in our classrooms until we have our dining hall. Um, and then, you know, I know right now, kids have PE with our PE teachers. They have music with Nikki Kemp and JK. Um, next year, you'll see that they, they'll have the same. They'll have PE, they'll have music with another teacher. I know that Dr. Danielle leads yoga, um, and they have social-emotional learning, and we have a wonderful wonderful uh, school counselor who works with all of our every grade level um, kindergarten through fourth grade in kindergarten she really focuses on i care language and just it's just giving them the tools to problem solve to express their feelings um, to be a good friend and language is really important so you'll see like we share a responsive classroom approach i'm sure you've read about that a little bit really it's about an approach to building community where everyone feels included and that kids get to know each other. It's not the teacher getting to know an individual child, but we all get to know each other. Um, it's about teacher language and sharing that language, positive language, and also discipline. When there's problems, how do we approach it? And so from alpha all the way through fourth grade, we share that same language, that same approach, which I think is really important because then the kids are using that same language and they get it, it's clear to them. And then in fifth grade, actually, it's developmental design, so we're just building, um, which is really positive. Um, they've been doing handwriting without tears, we do the same. Uh, and we're involved in service learning 
probably a little bit more. Um, last, this year, kindergarten did a lot with cleaning up the campus, and of course, the Kind Mouse Drive. That was really positive, but they're, they're involved in everything. So lots of, lots of similarities. And I thought, well, let me just kind of give you that, because I've heard people say, I needed to tell you that, because I've heard people say, oh, it's so drastically different. It's, not, it's different, your child's at a different stage, too, and has different needs. Um, one thing that is different is we don't have um, exploration periods as you do in JK, um, but that's okay. It turns into something else in kindergarten. There's choice time. Um, so there is a balance, just like junior kindergarten, between um, explicit teaching, we'll, we'll say, because even exploration is structured, <laughs> but explicit teaching, play, choice time. Um, there's a balance between all of those things. I think there's a little bit more teacher-directed uh, learning. So when it comes to teaching reading, come up close, <laughs> I'm teaching you a strategy for reading, and then I'm working with small groups, I'm working with individuals. Um, so we are teaching explicitly and systematically an approach to reading. Um, same for writing. So you'll see a little bit more of that in kindergarten and um, than you would have in junior kindergarten we also have a wonderful block building curriculum that has its roots uh, with Caroline Pratt, who's around the time of Jean Dewey in the turn of the century, early 1900s, who, she is the mother of blocks. She started the block building curriculum. And, um, and it's in every classroom, right? It's all over the world. <laughs> and uh, we love it because, you know, the new label of STEM and STEAM, they were doing it way back then with blocks. Um, our kids will go in as a whole class and build together. They usually build in partnerships, and there's so much learning that's going on. Um, often it's connected to a social studies curriculum, like the community, and they're going out in the world, and then they're coming back, and they're building what they've seen, reconstructing or what they know about a community. So think about you know the dialogue, the planning, the problem solving, there's so much that goes into this. And then as they're building these, just negotiating space, and those, very rarely do those structures fall. But if they do, okay, what do we do? You know. But they're learning about um, the science of building structures. They're also, there's a lot of math because of the shapes of the different pieces, so we integrate math as well. They're labeling and writing for their buildings. And then there's the dramatic play. They visit each other's structures too. So. It's everything, it's very interdisciplinary. <laughs> um, and that's a lot of fun in kindergarten. Rest time, rest time fades away. And it's funny, yesterday I sat down with some um, junior kindergarten students and I said, okay, what, what are your questions about kindergarten? And um, one student said, um, well, do we get to do performances? And I said, yes, you do. You'll have a big performance on stage. You'll perform at grandparents' day. Another student said, um, well, we get to do projects. Oh, yes, you'll have a project. Tell me, she asked me, what kind of projects? What a great question. <laughs> and then the next student said, what about rest time? And I said, well, probably, you know, you'll come back and you'll transition in. You'll be kind of tired because it's the beginning of the school year and you've been having a lot of fun all summer. <laughs> and there might be a little rest time, but it kind of fades away. And she was very excited about that. <laughs> you know, and it's just a natural thing. They really don't need it. Probably right now, they're not doing much resting. Um, they're probably reading at that time. It's probably a quiet time, but um, that really fades away. And they, we have a we have a little quiet time, but not the same. As junior. My daughter in junior kindergarten, they couldn't wake her up. <laughs> they really couldn't wake her up. She was out. Um, so I think that's one thing that we do a little different. They have art class. We have a wonderful art teacher, Lori Aletta, and our art room is going to be up here in the student activity center at least for a little while, and they'll have art. They'll have music. They'll have P four days. They'll still have media center with Ms. Smay coming in. They'll have access to the maker space. Uh, they'll have Ms. Fierce. There's a lot of specials that they'll have. Uh, we do town meetings. Well, I don't know how we're going to do town meetings. <laughs> to tell you the truth, with our campus being torn apart. But right now, every Monday, <laughs> we come together as a community, and it gives the children an opportunity to share the learning that's going on in their classrooms. And for us to just talk about, it's called town meeting because we talk about issues that relate to our community, what's happening, um, how we can celebrate each other, and 
kids get to know each other because it's important that we know each other as a community. There's a lot of cross-divisional work that we do, whether it's book buddies, you know, older kids coming down to read to children, or we're asking them to, to be audiences or members for our project shares. I know fourth grade this year, they were in Mr. Rose Engineering with the engineer students. There were times when math students came down. Same with kindergarten. What's special next year is our kindergarten students are going to team up with our ninth graders, right, Ms. Ms. Craft? We're going to start with 10th grade. Tenth grade, excuse me, with 10th graders. graders. And this is, and then our, our fourth graders are going to team up with seventh graders. And there's going to be actual dates that we have for them to get together. And there's a, some mentoring and get to, getting to know each other because there's nothing better than seeing someone you know and this, hey, that person knows me too. And it feels like a big campus, but once we're inter we're getting together for different reasons, it's like a small town. <laughs> you know, where we all kind of know each other. It's really nice. Um, I know that, that JK does um, some work with portfolios as well, and we do too. Our portfolios grow all the way through fourth grade, and then uh, the children, in, and they're focused on their project work. And it's kind of the phases of project work. Like, this is, they're reflecting on what, how it began. Like, this is with me as a thinker. These are the questions I pose. This is how I read. Then me as a researcher. This is the research I did. And then me as an expert. This is how I gathered my information and what I created and what I presented. And then me as a learner, like, reflecting on my own learning. How did, I, what did I get out of this, you know? What more would I like to know? What am I still wondering about? So those portfolios are wonderful. I, when we first started doing them, I said, you know, we, we have writing portfolios, we have reading portfolios that get passed on, but you know, these are things we can't put into a folder, and we need to have that documented because it's such an important piece of our curriculum. You know, what, when we talk about teaching children to be lifelong learners, um, what are those skills, knowledge, values, dispositions we need to shape over time? And so much of the work that we do with project work um, is a part of that. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we're documenting their growth. But more importantly, they get to reflect on their own learning, too, because that's a big part of uh, learning. The teachers will take more time to go through the curriculum. But if I was just kind of painting a big picture, I would tell you that the kindergarten curriculum embraces the um, responsive classroom. It's a part of all our classrooms. And then, so every morning begins with a morning meeting, a greeting, a share, a great activity, and then let's get started with our day. Here you go. Um, we, we are a language-rich uh, learning uh, environment. Um, when you think about JK saying, you know, we want our children to be great readers and listeners and speakers and um, writers. And so we create that kind of learning environment and those learning opportunities as well. Um, we have an approach to teaching reading and writing, the writing uh, workshop and the reading workshop, and it really honors wherever children come in. You know, beginner readers, I'm just, I look at the pages, and then there are children who will come in and they're already reading. But you know what, they still need to learn strategies because there will be more sophisticated words as they go forward. Um, they still, what we're teaching them is not just the decoding, right? It's also the thinking and the connections that you make with reading. So we meet children where they're at, and that's part of differentiated instruction. And we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one assessments to get that information, a lot of observations of children as well. We do the same with writing, and reading and writing go hand in hand with one another. So if they're st studying a certain genre, and they're looking at the craft of this author, um, how can they maybe use some of what they're learning from the books they're reading for their own writing? And they get to know great authors and they get to see great styles, even like using sound, dialogue, and like, I want to do that too. And they put that work in their own their own writing. Um, and you will just, you know, it begins with drawing, labeling, and then before you know it, the end of the school year, they have books, they're writing lots of books, lists, and wonder and, and research, uh, you know, nonfiction writing as well. I've been reading um, uh, end of the year narratives, and I even thought about reading them to you. <laughs> so I was like, don't worry, they all get there, and it's so wonderful to read them and just see all the progress. And everybody develops at their own pace, you know. 
Um, math is very hands-on. We, we are guided by everyday math curriculum, but we, we have other pieces. We, we try to integrate math into our day. So if it's calendar or snack or, um, you know, weather, I mean, there's lots of, you know, collecting data, making charts, counting. There's lots of math in our lives, right? And so we try to take advantage of those just, uh, um, and then we also have a systematic approach to teaching math. And part of everyday math is math in our lives and exposure and mastery, exposure and mastery. So some things are exposed to and later we come back to and we teach it again and we might come back to it again and by the third time, we're expecting them to know it. That's kind of how it spirals. Um, but it really is building really strong number sense and understanding, you know, like, a 10, you know, like what does, what is a 10, <laughs> you know, what does that mean, or a 12, you know, um, really understanding numbers, shapes, data, and the kids have a lot of fun, games are a part of math, and that's the best, one of the best ways to apply what they're learning, so we will be sending home lots of games for you to play, and they're having fun, and they're really learning, <laughs> so um, don't look for a lot of worksheets, because you won't see them, um, there'll be some, but usually it's just practice, but um, there's math is really the application we try to do. We balance it all. Um, and then, you know, again, the project work. The project work is usually about eight to 10 weeks when we, we go deep. We believe in going deep, not just kind of moving around from topic to topic, but studying deeply. Um, so you can expect two large inquiry pieces, investigations, and then there'll be some smaller ones. Sometimes it's really a negotiated curriculum in which we have, this is what we're gonna, we're gonna teach living and non-living uh, things. We have an idea of the skills that we want them to learn, you know, the knowledge, all of that, but we also wanna make sure that they're driving the study. So we have to be very open to where it may go, that we have a plan, you know, what are their questions? Or when we say, hey, where could we go and learn about that? They may pick a place that we never even thought of, right? So it's a little bit of a balance. Sometimes it's an emergent piece, and that means that a group of kids really got excited about an idea, and we paid attention to it. <laughs> and we said, oh, they really like this. Oh, this might be something really great to learn. And let's see, let's give it a shot. This year, construction was one of those pieces that kids were interested in construction, how buildings are constructed. And then they were like, oh, but like, how does water get there? Because they went and they visited a site. And then they had someone come in and show them how the plans, you know, for building a building. And then they were curious about electricity. So you never know where it's going to go and how long it might last. It might just end after several weeks. So it's a little bit of both. Um, and you can read the rest. And technology is very much integrated into our curriculum. Um, it's a tool. You know, fourth grader, all the kids, by second grade, they got Google down. Okay, my daughter was teaching me, Google, this is how you do it, Mom. <laughs> and they're doing their own portfolios by second grade. Um, but you know, that's because we've done such a good job in kindergarten and first grade, that they're really comfortable, but it's a tool. It's not like, okay, everyone, now it's time for technology. And we have a wonderful, um, we call it an embedded technologist. You saw her helping me, Katie Deegan. And what she does is she pushes in the classroom and she works with the teacher. She works with the teacher with planning so that the teacher owns the technology. That she is saying like, here's what I want to do with kids. And the technologist is supporting that. Like, oh, here's an idea for you that you can use. So, it, and sometimes kids go to the lab because there's a reason for everyone to go. It's a little bit of both. We're learning all these skills, but you want an opportunity to be able to authentically apply what you're learning. Like you're reading for a purpose, you're writing for a purpose. And that's really important and project work gives us that opportunity to apply those things. And also, it's so student driven, um, which is, you know, we talk about like lifelong learners, that's a big piece. A little list of, some of these I'm just gonna go through quickly because I've already said them. But again, our specials, we're giving you a list. Everybody does a performance. Everybody's involved in service learning. Um, now here's some of the nuts and bolts. And um, next year, the start of school, we're just gonna change it a little bit for kindergarten. We're, instead of eight o'clock like we are right now, just we're gonna try to stagger a little bit because of the construction. So we're gonna start at 8.10. 
and um, we're gonna, the drop off starts at 7:40, and then 8:10 will officially begin. But the children are going to be going into the classrooms, so that's the idea. When they're dropped off, we'll hold. Usually, the first 10 minutes there's only like 10 kids, <laughs> and then everybody starts coming. Um, and then the children, within 10 minutes, the children will go to the classrooms, and there'll be adults out there with them, so not to worry. And the end. For us, we're gonna begin, kindergarten is usually out at 2.40, they're like five minutes earlier, but our official time at the end of the day is 2.45, and everyone's being picked up on chargers. Safety first, absolutely. So in the beginning of the year, we'll open the door for them, get out, and they'll know the path to walk, and we'll kind of guide them in the beginning. Um, they very quickly, they're like, I got it. But 7.40, we're available. And then uh, breezeway, and then in the classrooms by 7:50. Aftercare. Um, so some of your children will have, be in aftercare. The teachers will meet them and bring them to. Right now, we're thinking they'll be in the Wonder New Wonder Studio, which is right behind these portables. Um, we'll have more information because I think some of those things we're sorting out. Uh, but there will be aftercare. There will be clubs for kindergarten too. We only offer a few in the beginning of the year because we're just adjusting to kindergarten. And I think for children who've been in kindergarten, it'll be an easy adjustment because, you know, it's just, I don't know, maybe 10 steps up, <laughs> you know, from where their classrooms are. And they actually could go right through and, hi, Ms. Han, hi, Ms. Marconis, you know, wave to them and then to their classes. It's really, it's going to be a lot easier for them than probably the kids in the prior years who are moving from the experiential school over. Um, and then we have also, so clubs last an hour. They, they're at dismissed 2.40, an hour and 50 minutes, 2.45 to 4 o'clock. And you'll get information on that. That's too much right now. <laughs> but just to let you know, we have them. Um, I think communication is really important. Um, just keep me in, in, informed about things that you think I should know that's going on for your child. And the, same for the child's teacher we want to know because when things are like maybe a death in the family it's good for us to know or um, it's something that might make you feel anxious um, so somebody was hurt or what are they moving I mean there's things that we you know somebody's moving or it's good for us to know so stay in communication with us even if they're going to be out for the day let me know <laughs> send us a, an email um, if they're going to be sick um, we try to communicate. We have our Monday, just like Dr. Daniele, I put out a letter, keep you in the know. The teachers also have a Monday uh, blog. Please read the blog. <laughs> it's really important because it's going to give you all the information you need to know about what's happening in the classroom um, and what's coming up. And then there's great photographs. I, how many of you like go through and like download? Yeah, I do too. Read our, our family handbook. It's a lot of information, but I think it answers so many of the questions you probably have right now going through your mind, but it keeps us all on the same page, right? Like, this is what we agree to. Um, I think it's really helpful. I, I read it every year. <laughs> I have to, but <laughs> it's important. Um, sometimes we send, we have a folder, it's like home mail, you know, homeschool communication. Check it every night, <laughs> it's important, because there'll be forms that you have to sign and send in. I think I love e-bikes, because e-bikes, again, is about whole school. We're bigger than just being a lower school. We're bigger than the class, right? It's, it's about everything here at Shorecrest. There's so many good things going on. Okay. Kindergarten team, they've been with each other for, for many years. They know each other well. Um, they're a great team. Also have a learning center which is important for all of you to know um, when children need some extra support maybe with OT or speech or tutoring um, we have Mary Pardall who is the lower schools director of the learning center um, we, we, we go to her and we work with families to make sure that students get what they need and that they're set up for success
there's a whole bunch of forms. So we're going to need the immunization and the physical. We need that before school starts. And then these are all online, which is like kindergarten information sheet, handbook acknowledgement, emergency contact. These are all you know, easy, easy, easy. But this is really important because we really can't have children here at school without that information. We shouldn't. Know the teachers that are yeah okay I'll give you that information it's coming up so August August 10th you'll get your child will get a letter from his or her teacher and you'll also receive an email from me and for listening conferences that's something we started about three years ago and we just said you know what before school starts we want to just hear from the parent so there's a fun tie-dye party so Who's ever in the class representative for uh, kindergarten, I need you to get together with the person who was this year so that you can plan that tie-dye party. And we have like a, a container that has everything in it, including the instructions. Um, we have conferences on a calendar, but if there's a time that you want to meet with the ch your child's teacher, you can do that. You just reach out and say, hey, can we have a meeting? So the, the kindergarten teachers um, will say to you when you, you meet, when you meet with them, like maybe the first couple days you want to walk them, and that's fine, but they're really capable after a while to come in, and we want them to be able to learn how to put their things away, what to do with their folder. If families come in and do it for them, they don't learn it. So um, they can do it. And then, so we have conferences in November this year. We're doing it a little bit differently. Um, if there's a reason to get together sooner, we will. We'll reach out to you or you reach out to us. Um, so again, we have conferences in November, February, and then the end of the year, we write, we're changing this year instead of the narratives in the fall, we're going to have a final narrative and we're going to do longer conferences um, in, in November and February. And then lots of ways to be involved. It's a little bit different, I think, than um, junior kindergarten. Junior kindergarten, I know, I remember you could walk in any time. You know, there was lots of ways to go in the classroom. Um, for us, it's more scheduled. We don't, we think our, our hallways as workspaces. I mean, they're, they're work and play spaces. Um, so we really, we want, we want to know if parents are coming in, you know, scheduled um, times. So it's just a little bit different, but there's lots of ways, classroom volunteering, field experiences, and we try to have different parents come, not always the same, it's just not fair. I think, because um, everybody wants an opportunity. Help in the library is always good. Um, parties, helping hands. There's, you know, and I hope that you're able to attend. We do writing celebrations. We have the project shares. There's a uh, mystery reader. And you know there are different ways to being a guest expert. You know, we need you. So I think there's a number of ways. There isn't homework that's gonna go home. Um, the homework is reading. And we know from the research that we've done that um, that is where we have, I think, the biggest thing, where we see children really benefit from that type of homework. We'd love to see children be able to do after-school activities, to go outside and play. Um, there will be things that were, are sent home for you to do with your child. I know um, something that's different is we do word study because kids are learning new words and they're learning how to write them and read them. So there's some word study practice that will go home, but it isn't like, here's your homework every night in kindergarten. It's a little bit different. Um, no need to worry, because I'm here. You can just ask me, come to me. Come to Jean, to Dominique, we're here to help you. We want, we want this to be a great year for you. I mean, I know that we're, I feel a little rushed for time right now, but I'm, a, I'm here. You know, reach out to me, email me, call me. Um, I'm happy to answer any of your questions that maybe you didn't ask or you didn't think of while we were here today. All right, thank you everyone. Glad we had this time.